So I don't know if anyone else is going to think this is cool, but today we're going to take a look at a program called Bitwise, which is a multi-base interactive calculator. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is the GitHub page for Bitwise. So you can install it in a bunch of different ways. On, I think Ubuntu maybe, you can install it from the standard package repo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe, I don't know. You can install it as a snap anyway. Or if, yeah, here we go. And on Arch, you can install it from the AUR. Mac OS, you can install it with Brew. And with Windows, you can run this, but it doesn't have end cursor support, so you're not gonna be able to do the interactive mode but you can work around that with Windows Subsystem for Linux. So with this, it's actually pretty cool. So I'll show you the basic operation of it. So I'll bring up screen, so I'll bring up screen key in a second after I show you the basic stuff. So there's two main modes you can work with this. So you have the first mode, which is just to run bitwise with some sort of argument you pass into it, and you have the interactive mode. So I'm gonna show you the first mode first. So if we want to do something like, let's say we want to run bitwise and we want to see what the binary value for 100 is, for example. So we pass 100 in and we get all of these results here. So the unsigned decimal, the signed decimal, the hexadecimal, octal, human readable, radix 64, ASCII, and the binary. And for the binary, it also tells you how big the byte is. So you can actually pass in calculations to this as well. So I can't remember the exact form for that but it's shown up here. So, right, we have to put it in a string. So it will support any sort of C style calculation syntax. I would have liked something like Python because you can easily do things like powers in that. I don't know how you do powers within C. If someone knows, it's probably a function, which is a little annoying. So I would have liked to have the Python syntax instead of C, but it's not a big deal. So if we want to do something like, let's say bitwise and we pass in this. So let's pass in the, I don't know, binary for two. Actually, will that even, will that treat as a two or will that treat as a 10? I'm not sure how that's going to work with how you do the C style calculations. I don't know if you can actually do C style calculations like, so, okay, yeah, that actually will treat it as binary value. So I assume you have to include the entire byte there. Otherwise, that's going to fail. Actually, wait, did I put that in correct? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Am I just forgetting how binary works? That should be 2, that should be 2. Those two together should be 4, not 16. Am I, f I think I'm forgetting how binary addition works. Anyway, so with that, you can also do things like calculate hexadecimal values and octal values and all those sort of things that are listed here. But the more interesting mode is the interactive mode. So if we bring up that now, so if we don't pass in any argument or we can pass in the dash I argument with some calculations, so we just pass in 10, that will bring up interactive mode with 10 passed in. So I'll zoom in on that a bit more. I'll bring up screen key just to help out as well. So run that again. Okay, so now we are in interactive mode with a single byte and all of this in here. So you might be a bit confused about what you can do, but it's actually very simple. So you have Vim keys that you can move around with. This is the main reason I was interested in checking this out because I just like Vim keys. So you can use H, J, K, and L and move around as you would expect to be able to with Vim style keys. So they work exactly how you think they would. If you want to flip one of these bits, so let's say we want to flip this first bit in here to one. So we press space and that will then flip that bit. And let's say we wanna flip the most significant bit. We can flip that and then that will flip that bit. So if you've never done any sort of binary stuff before, basically the way this works is going from right to left. So this first bit is valued at one and then two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So if you just keep that in mind, then you can easily work out the calculations in your head. So you can do other things in here. Like let's say, so if we want to add another byte onto this, you can switch between each of the different byte sizes. There's an 8-bit version, a 16-bit version, a 32-bit version, and a 64-bit version. So to switch into 8-bit that we're in right now, you would just press the exclamation mark. Then for 16-bit, you press at, and for 32-bit, you press dollar, 
and then 64-bit you press asterisk. So if you will have noticed, those are the number of bytes in each of the different values that are available. So exclamation mark is above one, at is above two, dollar sign is above four, and the asterisk is above eight. So if you just remember that in your head, then it'll be easy to actually remember what you have to press to switch between each mode. So if we drop back down to let's say 16, oh not 16, 32 bit mode. And another thing you can do in here is you can shift the bits. So let's change this from that number of 139. I just forgot how numbers work for a second, ignore me. And let's put in a hundred. So if we do something like a bit shift to the right, so if you press the, I forgot in a previous video what this key was, the greater than sign, less than sign, this sign. <laughs> Why am I forgetting what that sign is called? Anyway, you press that direction and that will move the, the bits one to the left. And we press it again, that'll shift it one to the left again. And if you notice, bit shifting is effectively a doubling if you go bit shifting to the left and obviously then bit shifting to the right will then halve it. So we do that and as you can see, it's halving it. So let's go back up to like 1600. And another thing that you can do is you can do knots. So if you press the tilde key, what this will do is it will flip all of these zero values to ones and it will flip all of these ones to zeros. So if you press that now, that will, as you can see, flip that and then you get this value. Let's bring it down to something a bit more reasonable, I guess. Let's go into 16 bit mode and flip this again. And that'll give us 63,935. So if you've noticed, that would be the highest supported value for a 16 bit number is this number plus this number. So I don't remember what that is in my head. I can't remember. Let's just flip all of those. And yeah, so 65,535 is the highest supported value for a 16 bit number. And in hexadecimal, that is FFF and octal that is whatever this is one seven 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 okay so i believe you can also do ands but i can't remember what the key for that is actually now that i think about it that what i just said makes no sense so for an and in the xor you need two different values so of course it doesn't support it in the calculator mode <laughs> okay i just forgot how everything works for a second ignore me so within the c style calculator i presume that you can do ands and xors but i don't know what the actual syntax for that within c is i should have checked but i don't remember i think an and is an ampersand but xor i'm not exactly sure about okay so in here we also have the option to run commands so if we press colon like you would in vim then there's a bunch of different commands that you can run. So if we go down to the bottom of the GitHub page, it's got all the commands in here. So you've got the help screen, obviously. You can clear the history. So if we look in here, we should be able to see my history. No, okay, it just maintains the history for one instance. Okay, but the most basic thing you can do in here is you can run the calculator. So let's say we want to do 10 times eight, and that will bring up that value in the prompt up here or the, the output up here. And by default, it'll output in hexadecimal, but let's say we want to output in decimal, for example. So if we change the output to decimal, I believe is the correct command. Yep, and then we can run that again, and that will then output that in decimal here. Or we could change that to output all, and that will then output all of the different supported values in here. And if we look in here, you can actually see what you can output actually in here. So I said output a lot in that sentence, <laughs> whatever. You can also change the width of the uh, number of bytes you have. So if you want to do 8, 16, 32 or 64 bit mode, instead of running the hotkeys, you can also just run a command for it. So yeah, I think that's, that's actually a lot of what I want to talk about really. I don't think there's much else I really wanted to cover. It's just a calculator and you can do bit shifts and you can do other cool stuff like that and I don't know I just I just thought it was cool that you can have a little calculator like this I don't really have much of a use for doing bit shifts and knots and things like that on numbers but if you do then something like this is probably going to be really useful so yeah I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover for this at least for the main application if you noticed here there's also a vim plugin for it. I don't have this installed but we can bring up the github page for that as well I guess and yeah, I assume that it basically does everything that 
you could do within the main program that we just looked at, but within Vim. So if you have some use for that, and you probably do if you want a calculator for actually moving around bits, you probably also use a lot of other terminal applications. So maybe you want to integrate this with your Vim setup and do whatever it is that you're doing with your bit manipulation. I, I don't really know what you're going to do with it. But even just as like a, a simple calculator, this is actually pretty cool. So I might, you know, I might actually replace my current calculator setup where I'm, I'm kind of just using the Python shell to do basic calculations. I'm not really using powers ever. It's mainly just multiplication and addition. So I might just replace my current calculator setup with this just because it's cool. It's no quicker. It actually probably is quicker than running the Python shell. It's it's just really cool. I like it. So that's pretty much it. So this is a very simple calculator and basically I've covered pretty much everything you knew with it. If I remembered how to do XORs, I would have showed you. I'll probably look for how to do it after this video is done and then just put it in the comment section down below. So if you want to know, then check that out. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you've got any other programs you want me to check out, leave them down in the comment section down below or on my Discord and I'll check them out if they seem interesting or if you make a really convincing argument that it's interesting at least. And I think... Yeah, so check out my library if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. But if you do want to be on YouTube, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I am think I might actually hit 250 before the end of the year, which is absolutely insane. So any help would be really appreciated. Down below, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon, so go check those out if you want to get video updates. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist that this video is in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out. <laughs>